My name is David Francis. I'm from the Nyunyal tribe of Beagle Bay. Hello, my name is Rosemary Nanjo, Nee Patrick. I lived here all my life, got married here and had my five children. Paul Cox, I was born here in Beagle Bay. I was born in 1930, 10th of the 10th, 1930. So I lived mostly just about all my life here in Beagle Bay. Uh, Rita Augustine, Nick Kelly, and uh, I call myself a Nyurian because of my grandfather. He's a Nyurian man. Well, I was here only when the Germans and the Irish nuns, that's all. So, I mean, yeah, I wasn't here when the French came. That was long before I was born, maybe, yeah. When, when, when she came here, she, uh, my grandfather's brother, Felix, gave up a cultural it's a lifestyle I'll know and, you know, we to abide by um, the Christian, uh, Catholic law. And we, we were allowed to practice our culture. Some wanted to be Christians and others still wanted to be living in the same old traditional way. Like, you know, keeping the law and culture. That's, that's all, uh, that's what I know about those old people that, you know, what I heard from. Was you allowed to, to meet with your family, go home and... Well, at that week? moment, uh, nah, I never mixed with nobody, I just stayed in a dormant. Did you like it? Well, not really. They did a streak, and I couldn't get out, and about 8 o'clock should be back in the dormitory. But it, it was okay, I didn't think anything bad. Because I was a rebel. As I was growing up, we, we were not to go see how old people in the camp. We had to stay in the dormitory all the time, unless Father said we can go, go out maybe on the weekend on Sunday. That's the only time we. We go out and see our parents. Uh, otherwise, we'd be on the other side of the fence, so to speak. We got to do what the, you know, what the priests or the brothers or the nuns tell us to do. If we step out of line, then we got cane belting for. And it's rather you, they use cane or strap or green eye to make just make them the blue kind. Well, my great-grandfather got sent to Channel Island with his wife, just out of Darwin. But um, we don't know what happened to him. We never came back. And who else was sent with him, we, don't, we couldn't really say. Some say my grandfather got sent over there and came back, but I don't, I don't believe he did. I think he stayed in Beagle Bay until he got sent to Bungering in about 1936. Or 35, 36, 37. He ended up dying in Bungering. But he didn't have leprosy. He was a. Uh, he was part of the tribal people who refused to give up their law and culture, so they paid the price of getting sent away, exiled from their country. And they died away from their country. My grandfather died in Bangrang, 
1937 and my great grandfather died in Channel Island. We never, we don't know what happened to him. We'd, we don't know where he's buried or if he had any kids there or if anybody else was there. We just haven't had time to follow it up. Families talk more about, you know, how much input they had in building the church. Because they put pride in their work, I suppose, or proud of the thing we built it, but Armov don't talk much about the church when it was built or built it. And my grandfather was never, never for the church. Neither was my great grandfather. They weren't with the, they weren't the end thing, you know. They weren't with the church. They just, they preferred their own culture and laws and culture. And they paid a price for that. They got sent away. And a lot of them knew that once they were sent away, that they weren't, they weren't coming back. And some came back, but they were the lucky ones. Not too many of them came back. The dormitories, the, well, the children were brought up in the camp, and what I know, the, their own parents put them in the dormitories, see? Eh? Yeah, here in Beagle Bay. I don't know, maybe because it was hard in those days to, uh, you know, yeah. keep up, uh, to look after your family. But anyway, they. They still had the bush and fishing, they, they survived still, no matter what, through their own culture, fishing and hunting. But, you know, some of the good things came about when the, when the missionaries came around, you know? I think when, originally when growing up in Bilbao, I think they still carried out their, their own traditional culture, like um, them avoiding their mother-in-law and things like that, they, they carried it out. That was part of their whole society. They didn't change them that much. They, there were some rules that they didn't break. And when the trappers first went there to help the, for the people to go to church, they actually had um, sheets or blankets separating the, the men from the women in the early trappers days. But once the paladins came in, I don't know if they followed any of the, they did their best to extinguish um, the culture. They still carried out their laws and stuff. They kept going as long as they could. Um, even today, some of them people, was, they never lost their connection with their law and culture because um, they practiced it somewhere else. You know, they, they went somewhere else to, to obtain their, their status and, and to keep on their, keep their culture going. They didn't just say, they didn't just agree with it because when some people only left a the mission, they, they went further. And there's stories of them being stopped at Beagle Bay, but that didn't stop them from continuing it elsewhere. And the last people I had on the head who was talking about it was old, old man Manuel, Manuel, you know? Because yeah. he said, if we start a lawyer, you my yoga. Yeah, he'll do me, make me man. Yeah. My brother-in-law, because he lived with a cousin of mine, which is Sarah. Yeah. And, uh, but because that was Maguire's time then, mm -hmm. and I bet Maguire say anybody put a knife or anything to these boys, whatever, yeah. it put a hair through in their guts and pulled the trigger. So that frightened them, and it was all over. But that's about what I've, I've had, and no more. We need to get our language back. We, we lost it for over a hundred years. And we, we shouldn't have lost it in the first place. We should. And it is very important we get to know and learn our languages and our culture. We know better our culture, but and the uh, like ceremony. Ceremony side, we we don't know mm. how to do kabbalah dancing, mm. or we don't know how to sing uh, uh, songs, and 
this and they this and we to teach us because all the all our old people are gone. It was in the early days. I'm just a young one. We don't know about those. But when I was here when I came they were still singing the songs Nunyo language, you know. And even um in the early morning I was used to go to the church six o'clock in the morning and we used to hear them saying the mass in Nunyo and singing in Nunyo with all Father Francis. And it was a beautiful sounding when you hear the people the old peoples in the church singing and praying in Nunyo. It wasn't Latin or English, it was Nunyo. They were still carrying it on at that time when I came. Yeah, they used to sing Nunyo hymns here. And then, you know, we used to go to Corbury Place. The old people used to tell us, like, you know, what Corbury you're going to dance and how to dance to Corbury and everything. They were all there, all young people, you know. I can pass on the knowledge what I know to the little ones, yeah. if it need be. I think there's a tonight now, and we are realistically. There's, there's a language uh, session going on there. Well, this is something now, where did I get this from? Because I was thinking about, you know, to do, to do, to do the uh, farm. Mm. Like a Where are you? Because you sent me something, I yeah. had something. So mm. I was like pulling that together. Yeah. And then just yeah. taking it one one step further and actually Breaking it writing up, it yeah. down how it's, how we're pronouncing it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's right. The, but we need to add then the, the Nyul Nyul translation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do those words mean, you know? Yeah. Ngaiju, Nganden. Nganden ji Maria. Filled by His grace, you know. In which it can graja, the Master with you are together. Ngalenje minin yambun, so ngalenje minin and yambun. What do those words actually mean? You know, live live means good, good feeling, good life. Live ji bulmururan, so it's like live ji is like ju you, you know. Yeah. And child, child is just bad. Bab, yeah. yeah, Bab, 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 Bab mm. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Ali Maria. God and Unju. Unju is like mother, mother, mm -hmm. mother or auntie, that oh, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Unju Jan. Mm -hmm. If they could bring back um, song and dance, yeah. yeah. And you'd be happy to have that. If, but I know it's really hard, but. Would you be really happy? No, I wouldn't be happy to oh, bring it back here. Yeah. Some, some language lesson? At least languages, but not, not, full culture. not full culture. Any reason? Well, you look, some of these kids don't know anything, you know? And what's the use of bringing the culture back, like lower culture, meaningful, you know, back here? And these peoples now, they, they wouldn't like it because most, of, because most of them lived here all their lives and, you know, they don't see those things. It was okay in the early days because we wasn't born at the time. But we're going into the modern world now and I don't think most of these people would like it because they might think so. It might be a bit frightening for all them. And, putting their kids into those things, you know? Well, if you will on the land, Cobra and things like that, bring the culture back. Sometimes I go to school and learn the kids. Well, yeah, because the only way I sort of pick what up I had from them is listening to them talking and asking them what they're saying. Oh, it means this and that, then you catch up, you know? You, you know what to say when they ask you something or talk to you. Oh, if I could, I would, you know? Yeah. Like with old Paul Phillips, I used to remind me and, 
you know, I pick up a lot of things and remember it through what he's saying and then answer him. That's why he liked me sitting down when I'm talking, because we talk a lot, you know, you know me and him, because yeah. I can understand what he means and catch up, because you've got nobody around and you sort of, you know, well, you forget about it till you hear it and say, well, that's, and you didn't understand, yeah, and you know, what he's saying, and he talking to the new you know, not in bad. Because, you know, I suppose in them days, they done more or less the same, they'd bring Marulu to Bigel Bay, from Jarinyan, and then Bigel Bay, they'd bring new new boy to Jarinyan, you know, because there was no one on point when they done Jarinyan. And wherever they lived, you know, might be Panda Bay, might, might be Judith. In them days, has it been a while, but yeah, where they swap them, swap them, Marlulu. Like, might be they done the deal with Jabba Jabba. You know, that's what they're doing close to that. And you know, from that side, we take them across to Nigana. And then Nigana, they do Nigana, they say, my aunt have been down there, you know? Cause that's why the law would be a little bit different when you go to Yamarang. It would part of everything it culture and, and then you can mix with other Ebony people, uh, tribes, and have it sharing like the way it was done. Well, if they're on the land, there's people here to teach them. I can teach them everything if they come to me and ask me. Be very important for us to regain our culture and language, which we've lost it since Christianity came. Young people these days, the only thing is wrong with them is, you know, too much drinking and drugs, you know. And when you try to tell them what is good for them, they just don't want to listen. You know, you're only talking to them for their own good, like, you know. But if they don't, you know, come to the party and do something about themselves, what do you use telling them anything? You only waste of time. But anyway, you can never say no, eh? to be here